The new GitHub CLI brings pull requests, issues, and other GitHub commands to the terminal. Most likely you're already in the terminal using git, npm, and other commands. Now there's no need to leave the terminal just to work with GitHub. So in this video, I'll demonstrate how you can use this new tool to help you improve your workflow. I'm also going to talk about Hacktoberfest and how you can get free swag the right way. I'll show you step by step how to do it. Really quick before we get into it. This video is sponsored by the complete freelancing bundle on studywebdevelopment.com, which gives you everything you need to start earning side income by freelancing. Whether you're a web developer or web designer, you'll have everything that you need to take control of your life. The bundle includes two ebooks, Freelancing and Beyond, as well as Web Design and Beyond. You'll get website templates, proposal and invoicing templates, a website checklist, access to Facebook and Slack communities, lifetime updates, and much more. Check out the link in the description and use the code STACK25 to get 25% off today. First, we'll need to install the GitHub CLI. So go to cli.github.com and install it for Windows, Mac, or Linux. Now we need to find a GitHub repo to work with. So I have a demo repo here. Notice when we go to the code, we now have an additional option for GitHub CLI. So let's copy this. Now in VS Code, I'm going to use git bash in the integrated terminal. And the first thing that we'll need to do is log in. So we'll use the command gh auth login. And we'll select github.com and log in with the web browser. We'll need to copy our one-time code and then press enter to open the browser. We'll put in our code and hit continue and authorize GitHub and then it may prompt you for your password. Back in VS Code, authentication is complete, so we'll hit enter. Choose a protocol, we'll choose HTTPS, and that's it. And now we can clone our repo. I'll clear the console, control L, and now I'll paste in the link that we copied earlier. So gh repo clone, code stacker slash cli dash demo. So now it's cloned our repo. If we use ls, we'll see the new folder, CLI demo. So let's CD into that, CLI demo. I'll clear the console. Let's see if there's any issues on this repo. So we can use gh issue status. With issues status, we can see if there are any relevant issues for us personally. So issues assigned to us, mentioning us, or open by us. We can also use gh issue list, and we'll see all issues for this repo. So we can see here that there is one issue. What can we do with GitHub CLI? We can view this issue as well. So we'll say gh issue view and then the issue number. This one is one. So now we can see this issue. The content of this issue, it says no more context switching. Our entire GitHub workflow can now be in the terminal. We can even script and customize with aliases and we can connect to GitHub Enterprise Server. So I'll clear the console again, and we can use gh issue create to create a new issue. So we'll enter a title. We'll just say update readme. We can enter body text here or enter to skip. We can even add metadata. So let's assign a label. Let's say this is documentation. And then we'll submit. So again, let's do gh issue status. And we can see that we have this new issue here created by us. And if we want to view it, we can say gh issue view. And then that issue is number four. And we can see the title is update readme. And we have a label of documentation. So let's go ahead and make an update. So let's open up our readme. We'll close the terminal. And let's add a line here. We'll say issue fixed, readme updated. All right, we'll save that. And now notice that we're still on our main branch. We need to create a new branch. So let's do that. We'll create a new branch and we'll just name this update readme. And now we'll need to commit. So we'll just say updated readme. And let's sync our changes. So we'll go right here and push changes. 
And now we can create a pull request. So let's go back to the terminal. So we don't have to go to the GitHub website. We can just use ghpr create. Now we can enter a title or we can just hit enter and it will use the commit message. And then an optional body, we'll hit enter to skip. We can again add metadata or we can submit right now. So now our pull request has been submitted. We can check the status by using ghpr status. And we can see our pull request here. We can even see a diff of the changes. So we can use ghpr diff. And we can see what was added. We can even review a pull request. So to review a pull request, we would use ghpr review. And then we could add a comment, approve or request changes. So if I try to approve, of course, it's not going to, to allow me to since I can't approve my own pull request. Uh, but we can go ahead and merge this pull request now. So we'll use ghpr merge. So we're going to create a merge commit. And then it asks, do we want to delete the branch locally and on GitHub? So this is doing multiple things for us all at the same time. It's going to merge the branch and delete it from GitHub and delete it locally. This saves so much time. And now you can see that the branch has been deleted and we're back on the main branch. So let's use gh issue list again. The issue that we created for updating the readme, we can now close that. We can use gh issue close and then the issue number is four and now the issue is closed so simple now if we come back to the repo we can see that there's only one branch and if we go to pull requests there's no pull requests but if we go to closed pull requests you'll see one that i did yesterday and then one that i did one minute ago some of these commands have flags so if you go to the cli manual you'll find the documentation here and you can get more details now let's talk about Hacktoberfest. So what is Hacktoberfest? Well, it's a way for you to support open source. By participating, you not only help open source projects by contributing value, but you also can receive some free swag. All you have to do is submit four pull requests during the month of October. Now these need to be pull requests that add value. No spam that just adds exclamation points to some random document. But they also don't have to be complex. I'll walk you through an example in just a minute. But first, a word of caution. Hacktoberfest has gotten off to a rocky start this year. There have been way too many spammy pull requests. Pull requests that don't add value waste the maintainer's time. Because of this, they've implemented a banning system that flags users with too many bad PRs, and this can result in you being banned from all future Hacktoberfests, not just the one this year. So don't be that person. Additionally, PRs now have to be submitted to repos with the Hacktoberfest topic. Also, in order for the PR to count, they have to either be merged or labeled as Hacktoberfest accepted by the maintainer, or the PR has to be approved. With all of that out of the way, let me show you how to properly submit a PR and participate in Hacktoberfest. First, we'll need to sign up for Hacktoberfest. And the link will be in the description below. And then we need to find a repo. You can check the resources section from the Hacktoberfest website. And if you scroll down, you'll see several resources that can help you. There are several links here for tasks for beginners. We can also go to the GitHub website and search for repos with the Hacktoberfest topic. So here we see over 11,000 repos with the topic Hacktoberfest. So there are plenty to find. I'm going to take a look at this repo from my friend Florin. These are app ideas. So if you ever want to get an idea for something to build, you could come here and there are tons of resources. So the first thing that you want to do is read the repos readme and look for a contribution guide. So here Florin outlines how to contribute. So let's click on this link for the contribution guide. So here are the instructions and he even gives us an example guide for our PRs. So he says in here to make sure that your suggestion is not already added to the project. So let's go back to the repo. I have a JavaScript calculator that I could add. So let's just do a search here for calculator. 
of course, it's already here. Someone has already suggested it, a calculator. That's very common. So let's click on this. Now this looks really good. So let's see if we can improve this. Let's check these links to make sure that they work. This one seems to be dead. That one works. And that one works. And that one. That looks good. Oh, 404 not found. And the last one, that looks good. Okay, so the first one and second to the last one are dead links. So we could remove these dead links and then add my example. So to do this, we'll need to fork the repository, clone it, create a new branch, make our updates, and then submit a PR to be merged. And we could do most of this here within GitHub, but we're going to use the new GitHub CLI instead. So let's go back to the repo and get our link. So the GitHub CLI, will copy that. Now back in VS Code, we can fork and clone the repo all with one command. So let me paste the link. Now instead of doing clone, we're going to change this to fork. Now it's going to ask us, do we want to clone? So we'll say yes. So now we've forked it and cloned it all at once. So now let's create a new branch. Standard naming convention for a branch would be the username and then what they're updating. So I'll say code stacker and then update calculator. All right, so now we're on that branch. Now let's make our changes. So we'll need to find that file that was under app ideas projects. It was a beginner project and here it is calculator. Close the terminal. All right, we'll scroll down to where our links were. So this first link was no good. And then this second to last link was no good. And then we'll add our link just below that. We'll say uh, code stacker JavaScript calculator. Let's get the link to that. It's on code pen. I'll just copy this link and paste the link there. And now we'll need to commit. So we'll go here and we'll say updated calculator app. All right, and then let's sync. And now we we'll open the terminal. And now we can create our pull request. So we'll say ghpr create. So now it's pulling the title from our branch name. So we'll hit enter there. And then for the body, if we hit E, it'll pull up notepad. And so we can say removed dead links and added a new example. All right, control S to save and we can close that. And now we can submit. Now if we do ghpr status, we'll see our PR. And that's it. We now have to wait for the maintainer to look at the PR and approve it. Now don't message the maintainers asking them to check out your PR. They'll get to them as soon as possible. Another repo that you could look at is this one from Wes Boss. He has blog posts here and says that there could be some spelling errors, syntax corrections, formatting, or converting HTML to Markdown. So you could take a look here and see what you could help with. The point of Hacktoberfest is to get you into helping with open source projects. And not just during the month of October, but beyond. Just a little help goes a long way. If a thousand of you wrote one line of code in a project, that would be a thousand lines of code. Together, we are strong, and that is the point of open source. That's going to be it for this video. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.